Ohm's Law Lab. This video will help to guide you on how to perform the lab itself, as well as give you an idea of what to do for the formal lab report. So to give an idea for this lab, there are going to be two parts to this lab. One, you're going to be measuring current and voltage, and then two, current and resistance. So since there are two parts, you need to have two separate hypotheses, at minimum one for each part. Your materials for this will be the same essentially for both parts of this. You're going to have a set of batteries, you're going to have alligator clips, different resistors, you're going to have a multimeter, and you can choose whether or not you want to use a switch. Now for the procedure, I've listed the general procedure here, but you will need to put a much more specific and detailed and numbered procedure in your formal lab report. So for part A, you're going to be measuring current and voltage. We're going to be changing the voltage by changing the number of batteries. You'll need to measure the voltage of the batteries. You'll be reading the current on the ammeter, which is the multimeter set for a DC current, DC current at 200 milliamps, that'll be the setting. And you'll need to change the resistor from anywhere from 47 to 1000 kilo ohms. So 1000, uh, sorry, 1000 ohms. I will show you on the next slide how to measure the current. You need to be very careful with that. For part B, you, rather than current and voltage, we're going to be doing current and resistance. And so we're going to keep the voltage constant at 3 volts using two batteries. And you're going to change in different resistors. And for this, we're going to be measuring the current. And then all of this data will go into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, to measure the current, you'll be using your digital multimeter and you need to set it for DC current. You will have multiple settings for this. You want to choose the 200 milliamp setting on this. The other thing that you have to be careful of is where the plug is located will be different for current and voltage. So you need to look for the plug that is set for 200 milliamps on DC current. Make sure that that plug matches what you're trying to measure. Now for the multimeter itself, you need to make sure that this is integrated into your circuit. So if you look at this quick example, we would have an alligator clip going to the multimeter and then from the multi other probe of the multimeter to a resistor, from the resistor back to the battery. So this is one complete circuit. And if I were to remove the multimeter, I would break the circuit. So the multimeter, when measuring current, needs to be in series with the circuit. If you try to put it in parallel, you are not going to be measuring the current anymore. So be careful with that. Now how to measure the resistor codes. When you look at the resistor codes, you'll notice that on one end you have a metallic strip and then you have some other colored bands. This metallic strip tells you to start reading from this side. We're going to talk about the tolerance at the end. So metal strip, put that on the bottom. So you start reading from the top. So in this case, each of these colors corresponds to a specific number. And when you look at this, if we look at this one, we, it already tells you the value over here, but I want to show you here. So we have red, so that's going to be a two. Then we have a green, which is going to be a five. Then we have a yellow, this third band, isn't going to be a digit, it's going to tell you how many zeros you add at the end or what power of 10 you're working with. Mm -hmm. So since we have yellow, that's going to be four, so it'll be four zeros or 10 to the fourth. So one, oh, one, two, three, four, and this is going to be in ohms. And so this is a 250,000 ohm resistor. Now the last band here tells you the tolerance. In this case, if this is uh, gold, that tells you it's going to be within 5%. The 5% means that it's 250,000 plus or minus 5%. That just tells you how well these were manufactured. It might take a little bit of practice. You don't need to memorize this. I will provide you with the key, but you will need to be able to calculate the correct value of the resistor. For the formal lab report, there are many parts that you have to be careful of. You have to be careful of the formatting, so that'll be the order and making sure that everything is in a reasonable uh, font and size and location. I'll be looking at your title, purpose, hypotheses, materials, procedure, data tables, calculation, graph, conclusion, paragraphs. A quick side note is the procedure also includes a diagram, so you have to be careful of that. 
I have posted the rubric, so please read the rubric carefully. It is very detailed, so read it carefully and make sure that whatever you turn it in uh, to turnitin.com abides by that rubric. And so you will have a, hopefully a good idea of where your grade would be before you even submit it. So be careful of the label diagram. That's a common mistake. You also need to keep in, in mind that I give points for accuracy. This will be under the calculations part. So if you have 5% or less for your accuracy, then you'll have the, be able to get full credit as long as you do everything else with your calculations and show me those calculations. You will need to modify your data and I will show you how to do that in the video. The video is posted on YouTube. I've given you a direct link from the OneNote file. You also need to make sure that you graph everything and that you show me the graphs with the correct titles, axes, labels, like all of the um, units appropriately done and everything clear and professional looking. So again, please read the rubric very carefully so you know exactly what my expectations are.